Well, good afternoon. It's our privilege and pleasure to be with you today and to be able to share not so much our story, but God's story of his grace and mercy and forgiveness in our lives. And uh, we just hope that it will be a blessing to those of you who hear it. However, I want to actually begin by telling you a story that my mother told me when I was about 11 or 12 years old. Um, my mother grew up in Chicago, and she told me the story of a young girl there who at the age of 16 fell pregnant uh, by her 17-year-old boyfriend. And when this girl's mother discovered that she was pregnant, uh, she and, and uh, the girl's father encouraged her to have an abortion. At this time in the States, it was illegal to do so, so they had to find someone who'd be willing to do it, and that took some doing. But eventually found a doctor who was willing to do this, and uh, plans were made for this young girl to go along with her parents to this doctor's office. And as the girl was leaving the home, the girl's grandmother whispered to her, God has never brought one here yet he couldn't take care of. And so this girl left the home, and with this grandmother's words ringing into her ear, they made their way to the doctor's office. And because they were there to do something illegal, they were told to go around to the back and let in through this side door. And the girl was escorted into a room, told to get undressed and put on this hospital gown and uh, sit on the table. And then the doctor escorted the girl's parents into an adjoining room for them to wait. And this girl, as she was in this room all by herself, she began to look around at all of the equipment there, wondered what it is that they were about to do to her. She began to think about this unborn child that was within her. Was this uh, a boy or girl? What might this child grow up to look like or to be? And then all alone in that room, she made a very brave decision. And remember, she's only 16. She decided not to go through with the abortion. So when the doctor came back in, ready to perform the procedure, she said, I've changed my mind, I don't want to do this. Obviously, he was surprised because that's what they were there for. So he went next door and got her parents and said, you better come and talk to her because she's saying she doesn't want to go through with this. And the parents came through and spoke to this girl. Fortunately, they didn't pressure her. They just said, are you sure this is what you want to do? Are you understanding the responsibility it will be on you to be a mother? But she was determined, no, I don't want to go through with this abortion. So the girl and her parents left that clinic that night and made their way home. Several months later, that girl gave birth to a baby boy. And if you haven't guessed by now, that girl was my mother, and that baby was me. For those of you who were here earlier, you saw my, really my mother's story portrayed in the play as one of the scenes earlier. And I've had the opportunity to share this story often, um, different parts of the world, both in America, here throughout the UK, and in Africa. And I always do so for two reasons. The first reason is, is because if there's anyone here in the story in the same situation as my young mother, I want them to know what my great-grandmother said about me. God has never brought one here yet he couldn't take care of. But I also share the story for a second reason and that is because it illustrates in very dramatic terms what has become for me my life verse, which is Jeremiah 29, 11, which says, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, to give you hope and a future. And I believe that when my mother, again just 16 years old, was in that room ready to have an abortion, that it was God who spoke to her. And he did so because he had a plan for my life. And I thank God that he spoke to my mom and she listened and that she allowed me to be born because today now I stand here 53 years old, married to this beautiful woman here for 31 years. We have five children and 11 grandchildren. God is, thank you. And God has uh, used us in many ways to share, again, his story of his grace and his mercy and his forgiveness in our lives so that we can benefit other people as well. And so now you're going to hear a little bit of my wife's story. Thank you. I was 15 when I found myself pregnant for the first time. 
My mother had no idea. I was about six months before she even found out, which was a, quite a shock to her. I was so afraid to tell her. I thought sometimes I would tell her when we were out shopping because she couldn't shout at me if we were in a busy shop or something like that. But I was just so afraid and so embarrassed and so ashamed. But when she found out I was pregnant when I was 15, she talked to me and we worked it out and uh, I just was afraid that maybe she would have told me to have an abortion or do something. I don't know, it was just months and months. One month turned to another month and another month. And so at six months pregnant, we had our first conversation about uh, what to do with this baby, what things would, you know, how she would help me because I was too far gone clearly to have any procedures done or anything like that. So I went on and had that baby boy in February right before my 16th birthday, so he was my birthday present. And uh, I looked after him and my mom and my brothers all helped. She was a single mother of seven children, five boys, and then myself and my younger sister. So I didn't have big sisters to talk to, and I would not dare share with my mother what I had been involved with. I just tried to hide this pregnancy as far as I could. But anyway, I had him in February 1981. He is now 38 years old with six children of his own, <laughs> hence the 11 grandchildren that we have between him and his siblings. But I had him, uh, as I said, when I was 16, and I finished high school and I went on. I knew I wanted to do hairdressing, so I went straight to beauty school after high school. And in the, during the time that I was in beauty school, I met someone at a club. He and I partied together and things like that. And then I found myself pregnant by him when I may have been a, maybe about 12 weeks or something like that. So maybe just within two months of our relationship. And embarrassed for the second time, I felt like I can't, I, I, I don't know what to do. I can't do anything. I, I don't know what to do with this. I was just totally confused. So one of my friends who was in beauty school with me at the time said, well, I can give you my, my sister can help you because she knows people and things like that. So I didn't have, in, in America there's no national health, so I didn't have any way to pay for any procedures or anything. So she gave me an insurance card that actually belonged to their family. So I went into this clinic under the name of Angela Miller to have this abortion done, and which was nothing but God's grace because here I am, I was meant to be at beauty school, but I'm in this clinic under somebody else's name, which was illegal to do. Um, but then what if something had happened to me in that room, in that hospital, in that clinic? My mother wouldn't have known, no one would have known because I didn't go under there under my real name, which was Karen Williams at that time. So I'm sitting there in this office waiting for them to call my name and I'm reading a magazine and they're constantly saying, Angela Miller, Angela Miller. And I'm not answering because I'm Karen Williams. And I'm like, okay. And then I thought, oh, that's me, you know. So I had to pretend that I'm Angela Miller. So I went in and they did what they did and I left that very same day. It was an out patient procedure. But I thank God for his grace and I thank God for his mercy that nothing, nothing dangerous happened to me that I was able to live. Although in the whole process of going through this, month after month, my mind would wonder, was that a boy? Was that a girl? What have I done? And I just had so much guilt and shame for what I had done. I found myself pregnant by the same guy just a few months later and I thought, I can't do that again. So I carried on throughout the whole pregnancy. I was mostly afraid of my mother as to why I had that, suit, that procedure done in the first place because she was a single parent and I'd already had a baby living at home with her, unmarried, even though I was working, I mean, going to beauty school and things, but it just was a thing that I was very much ashamed about. And so I just thought, I can't, I can't bring another child into this house with brothers and my mom and what will they think because I've only met this boy two months ago. What kind of person is pregnant by somebody after two months of being in a relationship with him? I didn't know whether he was going to stay or not. You know, our relationship wasn't something that was solid. So after I had that done, I was just very much uh, broken. But I thank God for his grace and his mercy. So I went on and once I found myself pregnant the second time and I had the baby. And Brandy, my daughter who's 34 now, is a mother of two. I thank God for her. And even when I had her, I just, she was so, I was so close to her because I thought I've aborted one right before you. I didn't, I didn't tell this story to people. People back in Chicago have never even heard this story. My mother doesn't know the stories. Well, now she does know, but I didn't tell her. She found out through a pamphlet. When I was in, living in Scotland in Perth, I worked for an organization called uh, uh, Crisis Pregnancy Center. So they wrote up a flyer and they had my story in it. And she, ran across it one day and read it, but we had, she and I have never talked about it because I was just that embarrassed about the whole thing. But anyway, I had my daughter Brandy when I was 20 years old. By the time when I turned 21, I gave my life to the Lord. 
I got saved when I was 21 in April 1986, I think it was. And then I met this young man here, who my children look very much alike. He adopted the first children, and we have three more together. But it's God's grace, God's forgiveness that I'm so thankful for, that he doesn't hold that against me. And I want anyone who's been through that to just know that God will forgive, God will heal, and God will continue to just bless you to be able to get beyond your guilt and your shame because he's a God that puts it as far as away as the, as the east is from the west. God bless you. I mentioned earlier Jeremiah 29 11 that speaks about God's plan for us and uh, God has a plan for every child from the moment of conception and thank God that he intervened into the affairs of my life so that I would be born and as I think about uh, God's plan for my life I'm reminded of the words of Jeremiah once again this time in chapter 1 verse 4 and 5 where it says the word of the Lord came to me saying before I formed you in the womb I knew you before you were born I set you apart I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. And little did my mother realize in that room there that God was already calling her son to be, to be a prophet to the nations. Because today, although I'm from the south side of Chicago, I pastor a church uh, in Glasgow, and uh, God has used me to, and my wife as well. In fact, we're just back on Wednesday from a two-week mission trip to Uganda. Um, and each year we go out there to minister and we get a chance to minister as well in parts of America and again throughout the UK. And so it's a real privilege for us to be able to see how God has worked in very different ways in our lives. Um, when my mother um, had me, she was only 16 years old and, and my dad was 17, um, they were not Christians or believers and their lives were a mess. Uh, in Chicago we would say a hot mess. <laughs> um, Six months after I was born, my mother found herself pregnant again. And this time, her parents insisted that they get married. <laughs> and they marched them down to City Hall and they got married. But now they're only 17 and 18, and they weren't ready to be parents or married. And so a year later, they were ready to be divorced. Uh, my father was partying and hanging out all night. He would come home in the wee hours of the morning, and my mom would meet him at the door with a frying pan in her hand saying, where have you been? She'd go through his pockets and find slips of paper with girls' phone numbers and addresses on it. They fought with each other. And to finally, my mother just had enough. She was so sick of the life that she was living that she went to church with her grandmother. And in that church service, she put her faith in Jesus Christ and asked him to change her life. And he did. She went back home, and for three months, my dad watched her and just noticed a change in her life. Now when he came home early in the morning, instead of meeting with a frying pan, she would meet him at the door and say, honey, are you okay? Are you hungry? Can I make you something to eat? Can I make you a bath? And this kind of worried him because the men in his family told him that if you're treating a woman badly and she's being really nice to you, you better be careful what you eat. But for three months, my dad watched my mom's life and saw the change until one day he knelt down by his bedside and just prayed a simple prayer. He had never read the Bible. He had never been to church. He didn't have any idea about what it meant to be a Christian. And so his simple prayer was, God, whatever it is that you've done for Carol, which is my mother's name, will you do the same for me? And he was changed. And because of that, their lives were changed. And then ultimately, my life was changed as well. Uh, because instead of growing up in a home environment where there was fighting and discord and parents cheating on each other and about to get divorced, instead I grew up in a very loving, nurturing, godly Christian home uh, because God knew the plans that he had for my life. And if I was going to grow up to be the young man he wanted me to be, I would need new parents. And he gave me new parents. He didn't give me different parents. He just changed the parents that I already had. And I thank God for that. And then one day in uh, 1986, this beautiful young woman walked into the church I was raised in. And uh, funny story, how much time do we have? <laughs> We're okay. Um, I went to church with her older brothers, and I never met uh, Karen. But I remember uh, back in 1981, Jerome mentioning in our Bible study, would you please be praying for my younger sister Karen? She's only 15, and she's about to have a baby. 
and thinking, wow, 15. I was 14 at the time. Uh, and she's about to have a baby. That's really interesting. And little did I realize that that boy would become my son one day. <laughs> God works in mysterious ways. But when she came to our church and gave her heart to Christ, um, I fell in love with her immediately. Uh, after six weeks, I told her I was going to marry her, and she thought I was nuts. <laughs> she didn't even like me. Uh, <laughs> no, seriously, I asked her a few weeks later to be my girlfriend, and she said no. But uh, I knew what God had placed in my heart, but I was so impressed with the change in her life. And as I got to know her better and understood all of the things that she's been in, in fact, she should write a book one day, really, because <laughs> what she told you here is just a little bit of it. But just to see the way that God has just totally transformed her life and brought us together. And so now, although we come from you know, different backgrounds and experiences and, and different story together, God has used us to be able to reach a lot of people for him. And so we share our story today, not to bring honor and glory attention to ourselves, but to just let you know about the grace, the mercy, the love, the forgiveness of God. And it begins at the moment of conception. God has a plan for everybody's life. Amen. God bless you.